Now the word um, the word Lewi, uh, like Levi. The word Levi is in even Leviticus, the area of study in the third book of Musa or Moses that we have begun and we're beginning now in the twenty four for the Hayarat Senbet or Senbet Hayarat, the twenty fourth sabbatical studies. Actually, Leviticus, which comes from the tribe of the Lewawian or the Levites, Levi has to do with law, Lawi. So the English, where we get the English word law, law from in English, comes from the tribe or the name of that son of Yaakob that was known as Levi or Lawi, or Leviticus. Now it's interesting. Because this is basically the, 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 the scripture of, of law. This is the chapter that really goes into an explication of the science of, of Christian or the Christina. The science of true Christianity is laid out. The basic physical part of what we have in the Hadith or the Hadith Kidan, the New Testament, New Covenant, the Burt Hadasha. As, as a metaphysical. You see, when a lot of folks just look at the New Testament without a good Old Testament foundation, they basically is groundless. You see, you cannot really do justice to interpreting and understanding the real, the true scientific and metaphysical context of Yehoshua HaMushi or Getachin Jesus Christos in the New Testament, in the Gospels, or even in the Epistles, without having a good groundation on Torah or on the Orit. This is one of the things that we seek to remind our, our brethren and to remind the sisters and to remind the Dek Amorit and those who are disciples with us and who are studying this particular word and scripture to first of all, understand the, there's a natural or the five psych or physical science. So when we're in the Old Testament and we're seeing the types and the and the examples, even within the book of Levi of, of Leviticus, that we are um touched we're touching on right now. See the difference between Yehuda and saying now under Yehuda, under the Malkah, it is metaphysical. But you cannot be of that order if you don't understand the groundation because the pattern See, there's a certain pattern, and that pattern was laid down within the Old Testament, in particular, in Torah, or the Orit. So, this third book, the third book of Musa, the third book of our, our Coptic Hebraic brother Musa, is very, very important. Especially when we, we have to keep that in mind, that what we're learning here is the physical types. But now, the Schofield study is a very good uh, 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 reference, the reference material, because it's in the Schofield study, one of the few such, um, such Bibles like this. There's others that give other sort of details, but some get too caught up on certain denominational kind of slants. And what we um, appreciate love in the Schofield is a Schofield is really more non-denominational. It is explaining the science of Scripture by Scripture. So when we're in the Old Testament, we can see the Old Testament um, um, simile, as it were, or the Old Testament pattern. Then we can see that fulfillment in and through the New. You see, so when we are in the New Testament, to get an overstanding or, or to really have our minds transformed by not being conformed to the world, we need to overstand the foundation from the so-called old world or the Old Testament. So the Old Testament, you know, it's like, I like, I like to explain it like this so one can understand the significance of studying the Old Testament in order to understand the, the science, the basic physical science, which, which in the New Testament is like high school or it's like college, it's like more advanced degree. So a lot of people approach it and enter into the New Testament, but they don't have the prerequisite. The prerequisite is actually the Old Testament. The prerequisite is the Old Testament. So when Christos, when the Moshi says like to, um, 
Think not that I've come to de destroy the law and the prophets, but I've come to fulfill it. Well, what is the law? Who are the prophets? And see, these are Old Testament scriptures. In fact, in the time that the Moshiach actually uh, revealed and manifest and came 2,000 or so years ago in the person of Yehoshua, the only scriptures actually were the Old Testament scriptures. You understand like Torah. You understand like the, the, the prophetical books, the poetical books, and, and the prophetical books. Those were the only scriptures. So when you're reading in the New Testament and it speaks about thus saith the scripture, it's talking about thus saith the Old Testament. Now think about it. Those who may only have like a New Testament only, when it's making a reference to Old Testament scripture, where are you to find that in the New Testament? You have to go to the Old Testament. This is one of the reasons why Kedemawi Hala Selassie said that the Bible should not be um, broken or cut into pieces. You understand? Because he recognized uh, more than any that it's a holistic. You understand? It's a holistic. It's a holy book and it's a holistic book. So the, the Old Testament and, and the New Testament, they are both important. It's almost like if you were taking a science such as um, calculus, you would need it to at least have basic um, algebra, for example. You know, you would need to have basic algebra, you, you know, and maybe even trigonometry. You understand know, before you can really do calculus or if you're in physics. You understand? You have to have some basic bio, some basic chemistry. You understand? Some basic science, some elemental science, some natural science. See, it's the natural science you build up on as you go to those higher sciences. Because if you enter into the higher science, it may be experiments may be fun and so forth and so on. And you had a higher grade. But you will have no foundation. This is when Christ said about building one's house on the rock. In other words, getting that solid foundation. This is one of the key reasons that Torah studies and for us the Rastafari sabbatical studies or the Sabbath studies, you understand, the Sabbath readings on the Sabbath day and during the week as one has the opportunity before the next, the next coming senbet, it is good to review and, and, and to study as, as much as possible individually and also to gather in some sort of a fellowship collectively. Yovas. But at this very time, it's important for many of us to get a groundation so we can have a confidence as we gather with others so we can really learn as well as really share and build and see what the, the vision what is the vision of the King of Kings in Christ? What is the vision of God in Christ? It's important for us to recognize that. So as we said from the outset, we're in the third book of Musa. The third book of Musa is called Orit Ze Lewawian. Orit Ze Lewawian is the Torah of the Levites. Now, Lewawian comes from Lewi. Lewi is one of the sons of of Yaakob, of, of Jacob, who was and is known as Israel, who received that new name, that calling of Israel. Even the use of Yaakob and Israel are significant. You understand? It's not just a poetical distinction, as some would say, oh, sometimes the Almighty calls the people uh, Jacob and sometimes refers to them as Israel, but there's a, there's a science there's, there's a knowledge that goes with that, and there's an application that also clarifies and goes with that. And um, we will touch on that, and, and this is another reason why we recommend the Schofield Study Bible, because it, it touches on, in the basics on a lot of these issues and points that even in our studies we'll refer ones to, and then, as possible, we will go a little bit deeper than... than um, than just that. So a Levi relates to the law. When we hear Levi, or, and also you have what's known as a levy, like a levy. You might have heard of a levy, which is a certain type of a tax. You understand? A tax. So you have a tax, which is a tax, a levy on goods, a levy on items. And it actually was derived 
Yelvison in modern um, European and Anglo-American law and in this modern um, l- uh, legal system, it was derived from the scriptures. But it has not, in its modern application, it has not remained faithful to the scripture but was derived out of the scripture and because of its infidelity even though it was a, is a derivative from scriptures like a lot of the derivatives in in babylon in the stock market and in the babylonian economics is what has been causing so much financial and otherwise uh, a crisis for so many are these derivatives so we see that it's not the first time that derivatives were used but originally uh, levi Levi from Lewi is where we get the English word law as well as the English uh, word to levy, to levy. So it behooves us to spend some time in this very important book, which is the third book of, of Musa, the third book of Moses, which is known as Orit Ze Lewawian or the Orit, the Torah, Ze of the Lewawian, of the Levites. But moreover, what does Lewi mean? According to the Hebrew, and we did a, a quick reference on this, the H, the Hebrew 3867 is Lava or Lawa, 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 Lawa. Lawa is a primitive root, Lawa, Lewi. We say Bamrenya. In the Ethiopic, lewi, lewi, it means properly to twine by implication, by it's, it's implicit to unite, to remain. Also, it has the inherent idea to borrow as a form of a gedita or an obligation or to cause to lend, to cause one to lend, to abide with, as well as a borrow or a borrower. It means to cleave, it means to join in the sense of joining oneself. Lend, lending and lender is all implied in this particular name, Lewi, Lawi, Levi. And if we search in, in, in the scriptures, and let's just uh, do this right here. If we if we search in the scriptures on on the name, we find when Lewi was was uh, conceived and born in Orit Zefitret, returning to the first of the of the, the Torahs, the Torah of the creation, chapter twenty nine, verse uh, thirty four, and chapter twenty nine, uh, verse thirty four. Is speaking about um, uh, Lewi's Lewi's uh, Lewi's mother Leah, Leah or Leah, Leah, and when she was giving birth, and we're here in um, chapter twenty-nine at verse thirty-four it says Degmom Tenesech, when the Legionima Welledech Ahunim. Bale Wodene Yitagal Sosta Wendo Charlie Jochina Wellaje Latalahuna Alech Selezihim Sumun Lewi Bila Taracho. The Turk correctly, therefore she called Selezihim, therefore Sumun, his name Lewi Levi Bila, her saying Taracho. Tara chu, and that's an important word right there, the tara. Tara is tara chu means she called. Now, the twenty-fourth sabbatical sabbatical reading that begins our introduction to the third, notice the third book of Muse. And Lewi was the third, you understand, the third of the sons of Leah. Leah, and she named him because of the idea of joining. She called Terachu. She called his name Lewi, and that's from the 3878, which means has the idea of attached. 
Now, he was the son of Yaakob through Leah. Leah. And the whole story between Leah or Leah and Rachel is, is very interesting. And there's other science and other lessons and applications, especially for the daughters and the sisters and the mothers and the wives. Very important education there, very important science there, as well as the psychology that needs to be learned there. This is what the scriptures really provide us when we're able to receive them according to its original, you understand, original intent. When one approaches the scriptures in the Bible just as a, a from a Western perspective, as a, a religio, as a religion, what they have done is deriving, they are deriving from a way of life, a religion, a religio, after a Greco-Roman mindset and mentality, because those are the people who, um, upon receiving um, uh, the, uh, the Judaic people, the Romans had enslaved many of the Greeks before the Romans enslaved many of the black Hebrews who they regarded. They regarded the Jews as being a race of the Ethiopians, uh, Tacitus. Uh, this is history, their story, but their evidence that they use Tacitus, the great Roman historian, to prove a lot of other um, facts and factors. So therefore, if he is to be used for those proofs, then what about this that he says that the, the Jews are a race of the Ethiopians? That adds a very interesting um, color and complexion to the Judaism or the Judaism of the time of Yehoshua and the Judaism of the time of the first century. Well, that's another point that hopefully we'll have more time. And if we don't, please, brothers and sisters, check it out for yourself. Tacitus says that the Jews are a, a race of the Ethiopians, highly significant. But we're entering the third book. This particular sabbatical or Vayikra or Vayikra Bamarinya Terito, the G is where uh, where Tsao and the G is where Tsao and he having called, she called his name Lewi, and he was the third son, and we are now entering the third book of Moses. And if you want to hit one more three with this, March is the third month, and today is the 12th, and one plus two is three. So once again, we have the three in this there. Now, is that significant? Well, it's more than a coincidence because there's more than two examples that we pointed to. There must be a scientific significance, uh, a knowledgeable, when we say science, something that we can know, something that we can prove by that. But what we're doing right here is just introducing this third book, you understand, this third book, and this particular now we're in the Ethiopic Leviticus, as we have touched on the Ethiopic, fulfilled the Ethiopic Exodus, that particular study, as well as the Ethiopic Genesis. Now we're in the Ethiopic Leviticus, and Levic, Levi, Lewi, has to do with the English word law, law, Lewi, Levi, la, Levi, a Levi. A Levi, so law, Levi, taxation, so forth and so on. So let's get into this book and let's learn more on the half of the story that wasn't told to us so we can be able to apply the wisdom spiritually in the King of Kings and his Christ to uh, the resolutions and the overcoming of this present time and this, and this, and this, and this crisis that we are in. We are in the last days and time of our old system. We have to learn what the King of Kings true system and what the true new world order is really about from John's own blueprint from the scriptures. So please stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. Shabbat Shalom. Senbet Salam.